Hi everyone. Hi, Louie. My name's Louie, and this is Austin Woods, one of our Go missionaries to Hastings, England. So we're just going to interview him. He's real shy. Watch out. <laughs> we're going to uh, interview him, just ask him some basic questions, and hopefully, uh, through this interview, you can also be inspired to, you know, share Christ and be on your mission right where you're at. So, Brother Austin. You are a missionary in Hastings, England. Our primary question is, where is that? What part of England? Yeah, so Hastings, England is on the southern coast. It's on, right on the channel. So I, I live in a house that if I were to go any further south, I'd be getting really wet really quick. I'm probably like a 10 minute walk from the seafront. And Hastings is famous for um, the Battle of Hastings where William the Conqueror in 1066 basically like started England. Um, so that's kind of the claim to fame of that area historically. Oh, that's awesome. But where are you originally from? I am originally from Iowa. So I was uh, born, Hawkeye. born and raised in, in the Hawkeye State. And, uh, you know, God led me to Colorado and Virginia and, um, and then brought me to, to Hastings where I'm at right now. So yeah, he's, he's been good the whole journey. Let's go back to the very beginning. How did you receive Christ? I um, I received Christ. I became a Christian when I was 16 years old. I was um, at 12, basically started filling my life with just all of the kind of empty promises of the world. Um, you know, living for myself, partying, uh, you know, wanting to be successful, playing sports and popularity and all this stuff. And it all just was empty. It was all so empty. But I found the more I filled my life with these things, um, the the more hollow I felt. And then a friend's friend had invited me to a youth group, and I went, and I really, for the first time, um, heard the gospel, heard that the God of the universe loves me and lived a perfect life, but I could never live to die on the cross for me. And all I have to do is a free gift of grace is to ask to receive forgiveness and and have a relationship with God and he'll do all of it and and he'll bring me into that and I was like what <laughs> how have I lived 16 years and never heard about this and um, I didn't become a Christian right away but but God started working on my heart and I kept coming around the church and and asking people like so what's like I said you have something like what is it like it's God I have a relationship with Jesus and I was like yeah, but what is it really? Like, <laughs> that seems like a weird answer. And, and you know, eventually it's got to the point where I was like, you know what? There is something different, and I see God in these people, and so I think this is what I need. And I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life, and he just radically changed me from the inside out when I was uh, 16. So how does it go? If any man be in Christ? It's a new creation. New creation. That's right. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. So from, from that point, you're still in Iowa, all right? You're, you're a teenager. Um, what's going on with that? I mean, go, yeah. going back to school with your friends and your, how about your family too? Yeah, um, well, my going to, going to school, I lost all my friends in uh, like a week. Um, <laughs> it, was, it, really, it really was, maybe not all of them in a week, but all of them within probably a month. Um, it, it was really interesting because as God was doing this work in my life, it was really polarizing. People were like, well, you know, you're not drinking with us anymore and partying and all these things. And, um, you know, it's, you know, you know, I wasn't getting my, my phone calls returned or my texts or anything. I'm like, oh, all the guys that, you know, have been in my life for years. Suddenly, um, you know, I, all I hear is crickets. And, and I really learned that um, there's something about having companionship, fellowship, camaraderie, unity with people who care for your soul that the world can never offer that. The world can never offer that. And um, so yeah, I, I learned what it was to be alone with the Lord, mm -hmm. to le learn what, what, what loneliness was and, and how God is a friend for those who, who need that. And God allowed me to feel that so that I could cry out to him in need and then he could answer it. Yeah. So that, that's a, a bit of that journey. And, um, and he used that to kind of draw me out of the world. And, and as that process went on about six months in, I, um, I developed some really deep friendships that, that continue to this day with high school students from 
um, from a few different high schools in the area that were in this youth group. And, and man, the, the stuff that God worked into, into my life and into theirs and into the, the, the community and the people around us was just incredible. Awesome. Okay, so from there, now we want to know, you know, how did you get over to, uh, to England? Yeah. Um, so when I was in high school, uh, I've been a Christian for about a year, and I ended up doing an exchange program, short term, not, not a long term one, just, you know, the better part of a month, in uh, New, in, in uh, it's called Northumberland, it's, it's, the, it's a county that's in the, the kind of the northernmost area of England, and one thing I realized there, as I was there for, you know, for a short period of time, relatively, but you know, day after day after day, I never met a single other like committed, born again Christian. Not one. It wasn't anyone that I you know kind of met with in the program or any English people that I met at the school that I was going to or uh, faculty or staff there, or even just random people in the street. And and for me, um, that was you know, that was jarring. And I realized, man, there's a huge need, and I read in the scripture, you know, where Jesus tells us, behold, the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And he says, pray then to the Lord of the harvest that he would add laborers. You know, he, he tells us the most, the most effective thing you can do for the kingdom, for, for getting to work for the Lord, is to hit your knees. And so I, you know, I started praying for England that God would send laborers into the field when I was 17 years old. And then fast forward, you know, I kind of kept that up. And then when I'm 22, so, you know, a few, few years later, I start uh, praying for England one day before work. And I feel God put in my heart, like very clearly, Austin, I want you to get in touch with the pastor in England. I was like, well, I don't really know any pastors in England. So that's not um, super doable. <laughs> and, as I, uh, as I was kind of praying about it, I was like, all right, well, Lord, I just trust you to open that door. And it's like, well, I, you know, I can ask my pastor, um, you know, for the church that I'm serving at right now and see maybe he knows somebody. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, do you, do you have any contacts in England? Do you know anyone personally or anything like that in people in ministry? And he's like, no. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, right. But he was like, but um, he was a pastor of a Calvary Chapel church in Virginia. And, and he was like, so let me, let me, print off the Calvary Chapel churches that we have that we're connected with in England. And so I have like a list of like 40 churches now, and I don't really know the difference between any of them. And so I'm just praying through this list and I'm like, all right, Lord, oh, wait, hold on. And I see like, I'm like, you know, praying through each one. I'm like, Calvary Chapel Hastings. I was like, I know that church. and. As I was thinking about it, like, why would that be? Why would I know this church? A friend had told me who had who had actually visited this church. A friend that I was um, at, at university with, I was studying in college. Uh, she knew the family who planted it. She's from the same town where they left, where they like left the U.S. to move to the U.K. from, and so she knew them like 20 years ago, and then went to go serve uh, over a summer and just. I, you know, I knew her just like two and a half years prior to me getting this list of churches, and she spoke really highly of the pastor and the church and um, just the ministry that God's doing there and, and all these things. And, and two and a half years later, there is that church that she kind of mentioned offhandedly about how her summer went. And I was like, all right, well, that's a church that I've heard of before and heard good things about. And so I kind of sent him like a weird person email where I'm like, hey, this is who I am. Um, and God's put in my heart to reach out to you guys. And God just sorted everything out. He sorted everything out the moment. So I sent the email off. And the moment that the elder um, who, was, who received that email, the moment that he got that, he was in the same room as that girl who was serving. I didn't realize was serving in Hastings that, that same day. Wow. And I had her and two other people who were basically kind of on the spot character references who knew me. And they had been praying that God would either raise up or send them somebody to help with evangelism outreach. Wow. And then they get an email from, you know, 
Austin Woods, you know, <laughs> Joe America. <laughs> and, um, and so it was just really clearly from the Lord from the get-go. And he just continued to provide along the way and, and to confirm that that was the door that he was opening. So That's yeah. awesome. Was it Romans 8, 14, uh, those who are sons of God are led by the Spirit. And I, I have a phrase that I love, and it's this, I love the Holy Spirit. Let's say that together. Ready? I love the Holy Spirit because the way he moves and the way he guides and directs and, you know, just goes before us and we don't have to have things figured out and you're kind of in the dark and, yeah. you know, and you're like, Lord, I need some direction. And just like when we go down the freeway, we want to make sure we're on the right freeway and if we're going north or south, east or west, and we're kind of nervous until... We see that sign and it says in Psalms that you know God will give us a sign you know we can we can just be trusting in the Lord for that all right so now you're on your way what did you do like to sell everything and pack your suitcase and go or what yeah well thankfully I wasn't like too far out of college so I didn't really have any things to sell um, I was a broke college student um, I, I began praying, and one thing just kind of specifically for me, and it's different for everyone, you know, when, when God calls somebody to something, there may be similarities, but man, his plan for each one of us is so unique. One thing that he put on my heart, I had, you know, been involved in, in short-term missions before, so I kind of knew what support raising was like in a general sense and how to go about that. And one thing that he put on my heart very clearly was, I don't want you to ask anyone but me. And so for, for about two months, all I did was pray and just ask God to provide. And I didn't ask man. I didn't get together a support letter and send it out. Or, you know, I just got on my knees and I prayed and I fasted and I sought the Lord and I asked him to provide. And I had, in that, in that two months time, you know, I would, I would sit down and I would just pray for X amount of time. And I remember getting calls and, you know, I checked my phone when I was done and I had like two missed calls and missed texts. And it was like, hey, um you know, friends from various kind of seasons of life, all, you know, all these different places, like God's put in my heart. Um, I kind of heard you're doing something with missions or something, and God's put in my heart to support you financially. Like, what's that look like? And I was, <laughs> I was like, okay. Before I even sent out a single support letter, just by praying for that, for that two month period, I was over halfway raised for, for what I would need. And um, so I, I think that's, for me, Kind of what that support raising looks like and then and then the lord's like all right now let's get you know now let's go through this process of of building a team um not only for financial support because that's kind of the least important thing but but prayerful support which is the most important thing because you know he can always he can move money around in our lives and in this world and he does with however he wants every cent of every currency belongs to him but we get to we get to decide um, how much of our time we're going to spend in prayer, how much of our lives we're going to invest into into being going before his his throne to find mercy and grace for help in the time of need. I love that because the Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. Yeah. So yeah, you just hit your knees and then God provided. So um, question, did you talk to the pastor before about your duties and then once you got there, um, what are you overseeing? Yeah, um, before I left, I had a general understanding of um, kind of w what some areas of need were. We knew that the bulk of my ministry was going to be evangelism, and it, and it still is to this day, but, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of the nature of, of serving in the church is that, you know, if you're, and, and really just serving the Lord, if you're faithful a little bit, then God's like, okay, I'll give you more, I'll give you more, and you're like, all right, you can slow down, Lord. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> Any second now, <laughs> and but you know he always whatever he calls you to something he will always provide for it. He'll always equip you for it, um, and it's always going to be in his timing. You know it's he's rarely he's he's never late, but he's rarely early. So he always gives you what you need when you need it, especially as we're seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. And so I found that in ministry. Um, so you know it started off that I was just really just doing street evangelism. And then that became a, um, an after-school program at a, at a local school, and then teaching for a Christian club, and then ended up serving in a, in a hospital ministry, and then uh, teaching for the youth group, and then helping out with the children's ministry, and then some of the building maintenance, and 
um, which which is that's the last it was more of a volunteer thing um, rather than like a particular role, but it just all these different areas of need and getting to come along and serve you know kind of a um, the the blessing of of singleness is that I've got way more flexibility to serve the Lord and to not have to worry about um, not have to worry about you know a wife or children or any of these things that are that are really practical needs for for those married with kids. So I have, I have way more flexibility to get to, to serve the Lord in those areas, which is a huge blessing. Mm. Isn't that awesome? You know, you think about how Austin got saved as an Iowa boy, and now he's over in, in England as, as a missionary. I mean, that's amazing and how God provided and, and got him over there and how he's serving. And, you know, you just, you didn't have all that it took. We don't have to have that, do we, Austin? There's a phrase that really helped me, especially when Mark uh, asked me to take over the, the school ministry and from the youth group ministry that I was so familiar with. I love the phrase that really helped me is he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Love that. Amen, anybody? Amen. You know, and it's true because so often the Lord will lead us to places where we feel out of our league. You know, like we're not trained for it. We don't maybe even feel like we have the skill set for it. And yet God says go because he wants to use the weak things of the world to confound the wise. Because he won't share his glory with no man. That's what it says in, in Isaiah. So one more question, Austin. Um, what about us here tonight? What's, what's our mission? How can we be encouraged to, uh, well, we, and we know we can pray for a missionary. We can support uh, missionaries as we feel led, but what about our mission? What, what can we do for the Lord right here? Do we have to go overseas to have a, a significant ministry or can we serve the Lord right here? Yeah, I've actually got asked this recently. So the, the youth group that I was saved in, um, when I am back in the States and in Iowa every once in a while, seeing friends or family or, you know, somebody has a wedding and or I'm renewing my visa, um, that I get to serve alongside this youth group often. And one of the things that I was teaching um, a little bit about and sharing a little bit about like what God's done in my life with the students, they, you know, this this similar question came up. And I was like, honestly, I know I know a lot of you guys want to do great things for the Lord. And I'm talking to you and I believe you will. But to be honest, if you're not being faithful where you are now, if you're not being faithful with little, he's not gonna give you more. Like, you know, that's, this is, this is where, um, you know, cause they're like, well, what's it like to be a missionary? I'm like, I don't really feel like a missionary. I'm, the stuff that I'm doing right now is the stuff that I've done my entire Christian life. And I'm just like, man, I just can't believe I get to do this now as like, you know, when, when I would be working, um, a job that wasn't a ministry job, I was, you know, like we work, I worked for a police department for a couple of years and. Um, it was just like I got to preach the gospel every day at that job. It was amazing. And it was just using the gifts that God had given me to, you know, manifest his love to the world around me. And as I was faithful with that, then he opened more doors. And, you know, it, I kind of related it to, um, so where you guys are right now today is a lot of you guys, most of you guys don't work in a church. You work in offices and um, you know and in, in commuter situations where where you get to interact with people who need Jesus either either they already know him and need to be encouraged and edified or they don't know him and um, and you can't bring anyone to Jesus like Jesus brings people to Jesus you can't bring anyone to Jesus you can't save anyone but you can bring Jesus to them you can you can be the hands and feet and and the arms and, and the heart of, and the mouth of Jesus in that situation and love them and David when he went to go fight Goliath and Saul tried to stop him his reasoning was he said well I'm gonna, I can take this guy on you know because the God who delivered me from when I was shepherding the sheep the, the God who delivered me from the paw of the lion the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine also and David's reasoning for being able to, to go up against Goliath was he had seen God be faithful all the other times he had stepped out in faith. So I guess in a really practical sense is, okay, well think, all right, how has God gifted me and where has God put me and how can I combine those two things just to be faithful where I'm at today? And if you do that, 
promise you, you'll have a filing cabinet, if not literally, at least, you know, metaphorically, of all the times that God's been faithful. And as he continues to kind of up the ante, you'll be able to say, all right, well, God was faithful last time, and time for that, time for that, time for that. And just, and, and that is where that confidence in the Lord comes from, is, man, God has never let me down, and he's not going to start right now. Wow, that's a great encouragement, isn't it? I just want to end by quoting the Great Commission. It's Mark 16, 15, and it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we like to we like to tease sometimes and say, What part of go don't you understand? The G or the O? It's a really short word. And it's the first two uh, letters of the word gospel, right? Gospel, go, gospel, go, go, go. And we can go right here. Amen, Brother Austin. If we don't go over uh, across the ocean, we can go across the street and share with our neighbors. So why don't we end here? And can you pray for all of us here, our, our listeners and, and, and their mission? Yeah. Lord, um, thank you for this opportunity that we have, the freedom we have to gather together as your people. God, we, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who don't have this freedom, and we stand with them, Lord, in unity as one body. And we thank you, Lord. We pray that you would help us, God. You would strengthen and embolden us. Lord, give us a spirit of boldness to be able to be your witnesses, Lord. I think of how, um, <clears throat> think of how you said and you instructed your disciples, Lord, that we're not to hide light, we're not to hide your light within us, but instead we're to, um, Lord, to put it on display so that the whole world can see who you are and glorify, they see the good deeds, the, the, the work that you do in our life, and they glorify our Father in heaven. Lord, so we ask that you would do the, that work, and, and as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and needs come up, Things come up and, and um, Lord, we're tempted to fear and to fret. Lord, we ask that you would provide all that we need and perfect the things that concern us, Lord. Pray for Calvary Chapel Anaheim right now, Lord, that, that you would um, dwell in each life, in each heart, uh, deeply, Lord, bearing much fruit. And as we continue as one body to walk out and work out what you are working into us, Lord, that your glory would be revealed that people would come to know you, and that, um, Lord, believers would be discipled, that we would make disciples, and you would come. You would come soon, we ask, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thanks for listening.